What's up guys? Welcome back to Fisher Hex. This is Travis here. Today is going to be part two in our frag swap preparation video. We're going to be setting up the frag tank, making the racks, and of course fragging some more coral. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, before I show you guys the tank, I just briefly want to go into these frag racks. Now this is the third version that I've made, and what I did differently this time is I've actually made three of them to go inside the frag tank instead of one larger one. That way I can go ahead and put the corals on in the morning, transport them in my cooler, and then just take the rack out of the cooler and simply put it into the frag tank. This will eliminate some of the stress and hopefully I'll get better polyp extension and the coral will look a little bit happier as if it was in the main display. Okay, making these frag racks is pretty simple. I like to go ahead and cut a piece of acrylic to size, then use a frag rack out of the main display just to trace out where I want the holes to be. Now this particular design allows me to have the bigger frag plugs and I can really fit more in a smaller area. Now they are a little bit crooked depending on where the marker hits, but it definitely gives you a general pattern. And uh, you know, it looks all right in the end and it does serve the purpose. And I actually, it saves a ton of money because if you're looking online to get one of these made for you, I mean, this whole thing cost me probably maybe $10. I know online you're looking at a hundred plus. So uh, yeah, it might be crooked, but it definitely serves a purpose and uh, you know, it's really not that bad. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is come through here with the quarter inch drill bit, drill out all the holes. But uh, what I didn't put in the video is I did use a little mini torch and I came through and pretty much just cleaned up the entire rack, you know, get any of the uh, frays from the drill bit, making the sides a little bit shinier. And uh, it just kind of makes the rack look a little bit better. Okay, moving on to the final step in creating this frag rack. I need to make legs to keep it elevated off the bottom of the tank. Now I'm simply just cutting a half inch acrylic rod to about an inch and gluing it with the Weld On 16. As you can see, all three racks fit in here without any issues, and I get approximately 365 slots. So that's more than enough coral to bring with me to this frag swap. Now before we move on, I just want to take a moment to give a shout out to Reefing with Billy Pipes. He is the one who created this frag tank for me, and honestly, I am shocked. It is gorgeous. The attention to detail is beyond anything I've ever had before. Now I really appreciate the support, especially dealing with my schedule and getting this tank uh, delivered to me. I really couldn't have asked for a better experience. Okay, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to his channel in the description below. Definitely go over there and check out his channel. Subscribe. Tell him Fish a Hex sent you. Also, guys, if you're interested in getting a tank like this, go ahead and contact him directly and set something up. It's definitely worth the price. Okay, let's move on to drilling the half-inch hole for the return bulkhead. Now, I'm simply going to trace the hole with a pen here. That way I get a general idea where I want the drill bit to go. Now the drill bits I'm using, I picked up the kit from Harbor Freight for about $17. It has a whole bunch of different sizes. And uh, basically it's, you can change the size out and there's that metal drill bit there and then you can change the actual cutting bit uh, to whatever size works for you. But basically you can start the hole with this, it guides it all the way through and you don't have to worry about it skipping around. So it's definitely cool and it worked out great. It did take about a minute to get through the Corian. I didn't really add any pressure because I didn't want to take any chances. It's my first time drilling this type of material. So I just let the drill bit do the work. It took a little bit of time but it has a clean hole and it looks great. All right, now that the tank is drilled, I'm going to add the bulkhead and the return pump. I'm going to simply just put the bulkhead in, screw it on, and tighten it down with a pair of pliers. Then I'm going to add the 1,200-gallon lifeguard return pump. I like this return pump because it actually allows you to adjust the flow just in case you don't want the full 1,200 gallons. You can go ahead and change it out. And uh, it's small, compact. It fits in the space without any issue. So I'm definitely, uh, I'm definitely a fan of these pumps, and I've used them in the past. Now, as you can see, there's a gap there that needs to be filled. I'm going to go ahead and use a piece of pipe from Home Depot. I do need to heat up one end of it to get it to fit around the uh, bulkhead connection, but it only takes a couple minutes, and honestly, it, it doesn't affect the pipe. You just simply got to you know loosen it up a little bit to get it around the uh, barb fitting. But other than that, it works out great, and uh, it's stable, and I don't have to worry about it getting loose or spraying all over the place. Okay, once the return pump is in and the heater, I'm going to go ahead and add a black sponge. Now, during the frag swap, I plan on adding a filter sock along with a bag of carbon. Now what this will do is filter out any of the detritus plus the carbon will suck out any of the toxins due to stress during shipping and hopefully the tank will look crystal clear. Okay now that everything is connected I'm going to go ahead and do a quick test fill to make sure everything works properly and to get a general idea of how much water I need to bring to the swap. Now after it was all said and done is about 11 gallons total and that is perfect. I couldn't really have asked for a better amount to bring to a frag swap. My plan is to go ahead and do a water change out of the main display the morning of the swap and then just bring that water with me. Okay, here's a couple shots of the tank full of water and running. Now, as you can see, the water level is pretty decent inside the tank, and I'm getting a ton of flow coming from that return pump. 
Now I don't think I'm going to add any lock line to this bulkhead just because I don't know if there's going to be enough room with all the frag plugs. Now I will bring an extra power head just in case there isn't enough flow within the tank, but so far it looks pretty good and uh, everything works properly. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting to this frag swap. All right, now that the frag tank's taken care of, let's get over to the main display and start cutting some coral. Now I've chose to uh, go ahead and razor blade some of this green star polyps off the bottom glass uh, for a couple reasons. Basically, it's growing too close to my other frags there, and the last thing I needed to do is attach to those and start killing them as it's been doing uh, for this entire rock structure. If you guys didn't already know this, I didn't intend for this green star polyps to even get on this structure. It was secluded, but it touched the, uh, the structure for only a couple days, and then unfortunately it grew onto it. Now once green star polyps gets on there, it's almost impossible to get off. And I'd basically been slowly watching it over the last few months just kind of grow over LPS corals and kill them. Okay, the next thing I'm going to remove is a chunk of rock completely covered in these yellow pallies. Now it does kind of fill in the gap there between the two sections, but I do anticipate it completely filling in as time goes on. Now I've been getting requests to sell this coral and I haven't sold it out of frag swap before. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some chunks out of it here with a chisel coming up. And then I will uh, make decent sized frags out of that. And then of course I will bring them to the swap and add them to the website. So first and foremost, chiseling rock is definitely not safe, especially for zoanthids and pallies. So you need to be using uh, glove protection, face and eye protection at all times. You don't want this shit getting in your mouth and you definitely don't want to get it in your eyes or open cuts. So go ahead and make sure you have the proper protection. But it, other than that, it's pretty simple. Uh, basically using a chisel, a hammer, breaking it up to decent sized chunks and um, you know fragging them out as we go. I will cut the chunks down a little bit when we get into the frag room just to make sure that they're not awkward and they do fit on the plug. But other than that, it's a pretty simple process. And uh, you know, as long as you're safe, you'll be good to go. Okay, now that we have all our coral, let's get over to the frag room and start cutting stuff up. Now the first coral we're gonna do is the green star polyps. I'm simply going to cut it up into squares just big enough to fit on the frag plugs. Now they're just big enough to fit because I want them to encrust a little bit before I sell them, but I don't want them to grow over the frag plugs getting on the rack. Now if you do plan on keeping this stuff, try to keep it in a secluded area in the tank, or if you keep it in a frag system, keep it away from other frags that are not green star polyps. That way you don't have to worry about it spreading and killing that coral. All right, now that we're done with the green star polyps, let's go ahead and move on to the yellow pallies. Now basically, I'm just trimming them up to make sure they fit properly on the frag plugs. These are old frag plugs I got from eBay, and um, this is pretty much the last batch that I have before I move on to my own. And uh, basically, I'm just trimming them up to make sure that they fit properly and can still encrust and spread the polyps. Now I did get a, quite a few from this rock, a lot more than I anticipated, uh, which is always a good thing. It just kind of makes me wonder how many frags are really inside my reef tank. Uh, now that I kind of just started pulling some stuff out, it really puts it in perspective on how much coral is really in this tank. Now I will say, once I finish fragging up this rock and putting them into the uh, frag tank, I will say that I have no room left for coral. And I haven't said that in a long time, but basically my frag system is completely full and then I have two racks in the main display that are completely full. Now I can only bring about 365 frags with me to the swap, so I will pick and choose uh, what I think will sell at the frag swap and bring that with me. Well guys, that's about it for this video, but before I let you go, I just want to address a couple things to make sure we're all on the same page. Now, I've been getting a lot of emails asking about Coral, when it's going to be ready to go, when I'll be shipping, if the website's working, all that kind of stuff. And right now, the website works. I mean, I'm getting business just outside of Coral sales, so the website works, but Coral sales won't be live until the first or second week of February. I will do a complete video on boxing Coral, shipping Coral and uh, the process through the website that makes sure everybody's on the same page. Now that video, like I said, will be out the first or second week of February, so look forward to that. Now when it comes to cutting the main display, I will only be cutting to meet the demand of coral sales. Now if I end up getting a ton of sales, I need to keep up with that demand so the reef tank might start to dwindle sooner than later, but that's, that's okay. I've accepted the fact that that's going to happen. I will also be adding a lot more coral to the website over the next couple weeks as well as a out of stock notification. So if there's something that's out of stock, you can simply get email notifications when it comes back in. Now if you want something out of the reef tank that you see in one of my videos, feel free to contact me via email. I can go ahead and cut it for you, let it heal, and then sell it to you if it's not posted on the website. But again guys, if it's out of stock, the reason why is because it's healing. Most likely it just needs to heal before it ships out. I'm not one of those people who's going to cut it and ship it out the next day. I will give it a couple weeks to make sure it at least starts to encrust and looks and it can survive the cutting process before I ship it out. Now with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Look forward to part three. I will have a whole bunch of stuff from the swap, hopefully, as long as I don't get too distracted. And uh, we'll see how everything works out. Wish me luck and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.